Hey, it's me, Burt Wagner. In last week's video, we talked about how reducing the number of reads that your query has to do will usually speed up the performance of that query. I'll link to that video below in case you missed it, or up here somewhere. Before we get to that though, I just want to plug SQL Data Partners podcast. Um, if you guys listen to podcasts, be sure to check out SQL Data Partners. I was on their podcast this past week. Uh, talking about SQL injection. It was a blast to be on. It's one of my favorite SQL Server podcasts. So they have really good overviews of different SQL Server, you know, topics and features and things like that. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way to get a, a nice high level overview of many different topics, you know, in a really easy way if you're commuting to work or if you're taking a walk or something like that. So check that out. I'll link to that below as well. Today we're going to talk about four techniques that you can use to reduce the number of reads in your query. Technique number one, Write more selective queries. So this one's pretty straightforward. The data in your SQL Server database is stored on these eight kilobyte files called pages. They're not really files, they're logical files, right? And the more of them that SQL Server has to read, the slower your query performance is gonna be. Now, one way to reduce the number of pages that SQL Server has to read is by just writing a more selective query. So what does that mean? Could mean something like, don't write select star, uh, if you don't really need all the columns. Because instead of then using a, maybe a clustered index that contains all of the columns in your table, SQL Server can then use maybe a different index which has fewer columns, and therefore your data will be more dense in each eight kilobyte page, and your query will have to do less reads and will run faster. Additionally, same thing goes for like where predicates, just, you know, include them in there. Uh, if you, if SQL Server is able to, you know, read back less pages because it knows, okay, I don't have to scan the whole index, I could just return this one little segment, you're gonna have fewer reads, your data, your performance of your query is gonna be faster. Technique number two, fix your suboptimal execution plans. So you might get a suboptimal execution plan for a variety of reasons, but big tip off, right, that you're not doing as good as you should be, um, that I like to use is to see if your cardinality estimates are way off. You can do that by checking the estimated row counts versus the actual row counts. If there's a big difference there, uh, more likely than not, you have some kind of problem that's affecting your query plan, which is probably causing it to do more reads than it optimally you know, could do using some other query plan. You know, a lot of things that'll cause those cardinality estimates to be you know, way off from each other include things like parameter sniffing problems could cause that. Uh, the use of table variables, just in general, it's probably better not to use them than in the few specific cases where they make sense. And the biggest one is probably just bad statistics on your tables and indexes. Now the way statistics kind of affect those cardinality estimates is right, every, every object uh, can have 200 steps in a histogram that will define kind of what the data in the table looks like. If those stats get out of date, maybe because they don't get rebuilt, um, or just, you know, your data is heavily skewed, your, S your execution plans probably aren't gonna have good estimates and they're gonna do things that they shouldn't do. Like, for example, if SQL Server thinks you're only gonna be bringing back a little few number of rows, then it might do something like a nested loop for a join. Whereas in reality, if it's having to return millions of rows and it got that estimate wrong, uh, it probably would have been better off with a hash uh, join instead, but your query is gonna be looping and, and doing these lookups forever. It's gonna be really slow. It's gonna have to do lots of reads. So fix the source of those problems by fixing your statistics. Um, I've included some links below on how to do that as well. All right, moving on. Technique number three, adding an index. What the heck? Reads are evil. All right, half an hour later, because my battery died and I need to charge it, hopefully it doesn't die again. Uh, back to the video. Technique number three, add an index. So indexes are just basically copies of your data that are stored in a different order, and typically, right, they're narrower. There's fewer columns in there. What that does then, it means that your data is denser. There's more data that can fit on a single eight kilobyte page of data that's in an index. That can help you reduce reads because if you can build an index that has only the columns and the data that you need, SQL Server will be able to use that index instead to read all the data you need using fewer pages, making your query run faster. You can kind of think of it like a cup of coffee or a shot of espresso. They both have the same amount of caffeine in them, but the shot of espresso, you're gonna get that caffeine in way fewer volume of liquid. As opposed to the cup of coffee, you're gonna still get the caffeine, you're still gonna get the same data. Uh, it's just gonna take more liquid to consume it all, right? That's the big difference there. 
But don't go all willy-nilly adding indexes, you know, to tables without taking a look to see what exists first. It's possible that adding an index will actually slow performance down uh, for your query in particular or from other queries that are running. It's also a big waste of space if you add an index that almost matches an existing index. So what you want to do is check the existing index, check the key columns and the included columns that are on that index, and if your query needs maybe just one more column, you might be able to just include it to that existing index um, instead of creating a whole new one. All right, the last technique is reducing index fragmentation. So we talked about how if you could fit more relevant data that you need on a single page, your page density is greater, and SQL Server will have to do fewer reads to return your results. A SQL Server index, however, can get fragmented, and what that means is basically things get out of order, right? There's internal fragmentation, which happens within that eight kilobyte page level. There's external fragmentation, which is the, you know, the order of the pages that they're supposed to go in um, doesn't really work. The physical order of them and the logical order don't match up. So if you had an index page of eight kilobytes and it had you know, so much data and then you insert a new row um, or update a value to take up more space, a page split occurs and now you have two pages that basically contain that same amount of data or the same records of data, SQL Server now has to read two pages instead of one. And so the more pages you have, right, the slower your query is gonna run and performance is bad, yada, 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 we've gone over that. The key thing to do is to be sure to have some kind of index maintenance in place, right? So either reorganizing uh, your indexes and then rebuilding statistics or just rebuild the index if you're able to. That'll reduce fragmentation. It'll make your queries read less pages of data. You can also play with the fill factor, which determines the density of a page essentially. It's how much, how much, how full a page needs to be of data before SQL Server starts putting new data in a new page. You know, if your settings are set to fill factor of 0 or 100, basically that means SQL Server is going to try to cram as much data as it can into that page, which will then be problematic because then if there's new data that needs to fit onto that page, page split's going to happen. If you set a fill factor to something like 80, right, there'll always be a little bit of free space left on the page. So initially, right, maybe in the perfect scenario where all your indexes are not fragmented, you'll actually have slower reads because your data will take up more pages. Uh, but then if there's inserts or updates happening, those new records or updated records might still be able to fit on the same number of pages. So over time, right before your next index maintenance job runs, you might not create more pages, right? Which will result in a faster query. So that's it for me this week. Thank you for watching again. Hope you got something out of this video and you're able to reduce the number of reads in your queries to make them run faster. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate when you guys do that. And I will see you again next week. Thanks.